Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are doing this video just to partially address the pestilences that are coming up on the earth right now, and particularly the coronavirus that um, has come from Asia, um, China, and is now in about 70 countries. Um, there's a lot we would want to say, but you know. We can't say it all, so this video is a like a, a first first video on this matter. We have done, we have said things from the pulpit, etc., in terms of guidelines, suggestions, recommendations. Also, we have recognized the guidelines given by who World Health Organization, you know, guidelines and um, recommendations. Those given by the CDC here in America by local authorities, you know, maybe statewide or local, we recognize the um, efforts they make, and we we have you know given out um, some of these guidelines in our church, you know, that um, it's available to the brethren. Um, right here in New York, um, we are um, we want to pay some more attention, and it's always good to talk, even if we think it's not that um, risky yet or. Um, are always very risky already. You know, it's always good to keep the communication lines open. And uh, this is the Harvest Army Church, and we're right here in New York. We have churches all over the world. And uh, but this particular um, um, talk right now um, is, and recommendation is is referring mainly to New York. Others are free to follow, but um, uh, this is specific for the churches in New York. The Harvest Army Churches in New York and. Uh, the leaders and uh, we are in communication, etc., etc. There are some decisions to be made that we'll be announcing by by midday tomorrow. But now, uh, what I'm talking about are things that we believe are necessary recommendations. Um, one of the, the things that we want to pay attention to is is a, a, an area called assessment. Brethren, friends, uh, members, you know, we, we encourage you to to assess your workplace risk. Now, let me just um, say that what we are saying right now, nothing that we say we claim to be um, scientific or, you know, um, this is just pastoral, pastoral recommendation guidelines, matters of prior, matters of um, counsel that folks are free to follow or not to follow. But, you know, as I say, we keep the the communication lines open. If you're a professional, you know better. It's fine. You know more power to you. But um, we we keep the lines open, and that's what we are trying to do right now. Myself being um, the senior leader of the ministry, I, I just want to keep the lines open. The communication. You can communicate back as well. You know, and say you know you think this should be stronger, or this should be weaker, etc., etc. Now, um, what we're talking about assessment, workplace risk. There, it is wise to make an assist and a an assessment of your workplace and uh, how risky it is and uh, how exposed you are, etc., etc. Traveling risk, traveling risk, airports, buses, public buses, trains, taxis. You know, yeah, that's a, that's assessment. It's, it's, it's wise to make an assessment and make decisions based on your assessment. You don't just do things, you know, willy nilly, you know, and and, and have no assessment. Um, um, uh, the next area is the area called personal, personal, personal. We talk about assessment, no personal. It means, therefore, uh, matters of spiritual warfare. Even though we have all these guidelines, these uh, guidelines that we are following and trying to follow and are assessing, we want to know that whatever we are doing, uh, we are dealing with, with, with the spiritual warfare where we are, we are praying against these attacks, we are praying against diseases, we are praying against pestilence, and we are covering our, our people, our family, ourselves under the blood of Jesus. So there must be personal spiritual warfare going on in the midst of all this. And then we want to be very conscious, we want to be very, very conscious, not only a matter of assessment, but you want to be conscious of things that you generally wouldn't think of. Uh, you want to ask the Lord to keep you conscious and aware and sensitive <clears throat> and find yourself monitoring, you know, the different changes that are, that are happening in the news and and in other areas. So um, that's personal. 
then we go to the area of responsibility. So we started with assessment, then we went to personal, then we are now at the area of responsibility. Now, um, responsibility, every household, it is uh, every member of the household is not only responsible for himself first, because you got to be healthy to be able to help the others, but also be responsible for the rest of your family, your spouse, your children, your aunt, your uncle, your relatives, or whatever. When whatever you do, you do not consider yourself only, because it's a part of us that you know will take more risk if it's just about us. But it's not just about us, so you want to. Remember your family. If anything go wrong with you, your family is more exposed, you know, and um, um, so that that family consciousness, that that family responsibility, you know, like personally, one of the things to consider, like for example, those of you ladies who love to go and do your hair, and those men love to go and cut your hair, you want to evaluate that. You want to make an assessment of that, and you want to, even though your, your hair is, you know, getting pretty high, you want to cut it, man. You you want to really know, you know, when you go to that barber, is it a, you know, a safe place, is it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, uh, you, yes, you want to really, and you ladies, you, you're going to the hair salon, and you know, all those folks going to have their hand all over in your hair, and, and whatever, and uh, other, you know, it's a kind of public place, so. Um, a public enclosed, a small enclosure. So you want to really assess, you want to be responsible, and remember it's not just about you, it's about your family, about the baby at home, and uh, etc, etc. You want to be responsible also concerning your employment. You don't want to put yourself into a position where you, you may lose your job, but you want to be conscious. You want to be conscious, you want to be evaluating. Also concerning your ministry. You know, you know, as I said, you know, by tomorrow this time we'll be making an announcement concerning certain uh, um, decisions concerning the ministry. Because we, there are times when you advance, and there are times when you halt, and there are times when you retreat. I know many don't think of that. They think it's only advance. No, if you're a qualified army, there are times when you advance, there are times when you halt, and there are times when you retreat. But we're in prayer, and we'll do as the Lord lead. Whatever the Lord say will be fine. Now, um, then the area of public appearance, public appearance, you know, going out to the store, going to the shop, going out for the walk, for a walk, going to the park, um, you want to consider reducing that. You want to consider moving around less. You want to consider driving around less. You want to, you know, ensure that your home setting is fully sanitized and is, you know, is above uh, uh, contamination. And uh, when there are questions, you stay there. Generally, we stay there in their questions. So you want to, you 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 want to keep, you you want to be aware that you know that the more often you go out, it appears to be more risky. It appears to be more risky. You go among a crowd, you you have no control over the crowd. You go, so you 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 you, you make sure you do your shopping, and and you don't have to do it um, very often because you get enough. Then you're talking about awareness, we're talking about public appearance, aware, you're aware of the risk, aware of where you are. If you go to the supermarket, you make an assessment. If you go down the street, you make an assessment. Um, when you go out to preach, you make an assessment. You, you, you don't just, you know, and etc, um, etc. Et then, so I've talked, I'm going pretty fast, but we'll do a second one. We were talking about, <clears throat> we first started with the World Organization, the CDC, local authorities, then they went into assessment, then they went to personal, then responsibility and consciousness, then public appearance, and then sanitizing, sanitizing. We try to, we try to sanitize ourselves, wash our hands, and and um, use some of those disinfectants. You know, the ladies know much about it. I'm learning a lot too, you know. Um, disinfectant, disinfecting the ear, the, the doorknobs, the just about everywhere, you know, in my house, I, I'm sorry to tell you, but in my house, I disinfect my house every day, every day, every day, everywhere, everywhere, every day. I'm sorry, don't follow me, you don't have to follow me, let me say it this way, you don't have to follow me, but that's what I do. Um, um, sanitize your church, you know, everywhere, everywhere, the church, everywhere, the ear, the knobs, the, the, the sanitizers in the church, um, you know, sanitize. It's not going to be a church that things happen. No, it's going to be elsewhere. 
the other churches, the churches are going to be fully sanitized. Uh, yes, then you have your home, you sanitize your vehicles. Some folks forget the vehicles, sanitize the vehicles, you put spray those stuff in there, the door knob, the steering, you know, everywhere. Yeah, and, and close it up for a while, get out, and then go back later. You know, uh, okay, uh, if you have sanitizers, a uh, sanitizer in there, if you know, anybody come in the car, which is a uh, Come on, just give them a sanitizer, they rub their hands, you know, and it's good for them and it's good for you. All right. Mm. Mm. The, the, the vehicles are the toys, you know, you don't overdo the toys, but you, you do something to wipe the toys, or, you know, you guys know how to be careful to do the toys, because they are for babies, so you can get official advice on the best way to do the toys, when you try to keep the toys clean, okay, and the babies love to put, the, put it in their mouth, and the children playing. All day. Then you have um, your job space, you know, desk, surfaces the air, you'll be aware. Then um, we go to an area now called resistance. Resistance, of course, if you're having more trouble than you think is is manageable, then you know, I, you get medication from a proper doc, you know, and uh, you have over the counter medication for. You know, you know, the lighter things, the lighter things, and uh, we're not just talking about um, the corona, any kind of uh, airborne disease, flu, um, influenza, SARS, and all of those. Um, but of course, anything for corona, you got to get the official attention. You know, you call the proper departments and do what you got to do. And then, okay, so we have resistance and medication, official medication from your doctor. Then over the counter, you know, helps and so on. Then home remedies, you know, some some folks. I'm from the Caribbean, and some folks uh, from the Caribbean. Even some doctors I, I discover right here, you know, you know, say home remedies like um, some garlic, ginger, lime, and honey mixed together. You know, they all mixed together, and uh, they take it. Uh, they say take it. There's no side effect. They take it a certain amount, maybe two teaspoon or or so two times per day or several times per day and and you you know you guys know you ladies know how to make this thing then now we talk about avoiding there are certain things we say you should avoid you know you know how the, the heathen talk about dear devils who will walk from one mountain to another on a on a, on a string we call them dear devils but they, uh, don't try to be a dear angel well you, you shouldn't be a dear devil you know christians don't use that kind of word but you don't try to be a dear angel, you know, if somebody get ill and they're really ill, it's not your your job, you know, if somebody in the community or, you know, someone in the street, it's not your job in this time of earborne diseases to just take them and take them to the hospital. Mm -hmm. The best thing is to call 911 for them. They're in a situation where they probably cannot call, you call 911 for them and get the professionals to come and pick them up. And most times, even uh, even though you are right, the 911 people will do a better job. Because most times, by the time they arrive, they can begin to deal with the patient even before they get to the hospital. So don't try to be a dear angel. That's my word for, you know, what the, the secular call dear devil. Um, you, you, you try to be wise. Maybe you got to spare yourself, both for yourself, for your family, for your church, for your ministry, etc., etc., etc. Then you have, you know, the Lord give us a, you know, a prophecy. The Lord give us a prophecy. Um, November 29, while I was in um, while I was in Atlanta, and, and the Lord said, "Gather the people, gather the people, gather the people, gather the people." And when God gave a revelation like this, it means that trouble is coming. It means that calamity is coming. And uh, since then, we have been gathering for three months. Since then, we got it in November 29, we gathered in December, we gathered in January, we gathered in February, and we continue together. And we are having a, a solemn assembly right now, going all the way to um, April 12th, where we, you know, where we increase our gathering dramatically because we know the troubles are coming, and especially we in New York here, we know for certain, both from the scriptures in Revelation 17, 18, and many prophecies that New York is is on the radar for major calamity, major judgment. So you want to know whenever there's trouble, New York has got to be more conscious, more careful, more prudent, you know, and you, you'll, be, you, you'll be prudent, but not paranoid. Get that? Prudent, but not paranoid. Careful, but not fearful. Let me say it again, to be prudent, if you're in New York, anywhere worldwide, but particularly in New York, New York being the mountain top of the world, 
in almost anything happening, you have to be extra careful in New York. You be prudent. You be prudent, not paranoid. You be careful, not fearful. All right. Um, okay now. Um, Mm -hmm. And let me just leave leave you with an assurance right here. Um, assurance, assurance. Exodus twelve verse thirteen, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. I have another scripture here. I believe in Proverbs chapter one verse. 32 or 33. I want to read that, that one. I said, They that hearken unto the Lord shall be safe from evil. Yes. Yes. Proverbs 1. Let me see. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33. He goes like this. He says, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. God bless you. Until next.